Good morning, everybody. It is March 21st, second day of spring, 2018, 6.33 a.m. And we're going to start this video off by talking about um, a New York earthquake. Uh, 2.7, nothing super crazy, but still the largest earthquake in over two years in the state of New York. Uh, five kilometers deep, very shallow. Uh, a lot of people felt it. On my earthquake app, there's a little over 100 people that actually went on and filled out the form. Um, in order to register on this app. Uh, so I'm sure a lot more than 100 people felt it because of that shallow earthquake. And I felt it tied into our nor'easter situation because we've had some changes in that as well. But let's take a look real quick at exactly where this earthquake was. Um, it was near Malone, New York. I have the coordinates pulled up so you can see it's the north north area of New York, almost in Canada, but nonetheless in New York and the largest in uh, just over two years. Uh, for this state. Uh, still, we don't get many quakes that are five kilometers deep. Uh, you can see it is kind of in the middle of nowhere. There are surrounding areas. We have Lawrenceville there, uh, Dixon, Dixon Center, uh, East Dixon. Uh, this whole area is pretty much in the shock zone, if you want to call it that. And that, even that word is a little over-exaggeratory because uh, this was a smaller earthquake, 2.7, but still a pretty big deal for New York as it is, once again, uh, the biggest earthquake in the last two years. So uh, we've been seeing a little bit of an uptick in northeast earthquakes. Uh, there was one actually, I believe, in Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't really look into that one yet, but a uh, uh, little bit of a rare earthquake. We had another one down here, uh, I believe, in Oklahoma overnight last night as well. So anyway, let's talk about Toby. There's been some changes with Toby as far as snowfall. Now, this is putting New York City... Uh, possibly at record snowfall, not just for the month of March, but for a very long time. And we are in the 12 to 18 range for New York City still. A little bit of a change for Philadelphia, uh, which is a good thing, at least for me, because I have to travel tomorrow, um, and the people of Philadelphia. So we are looking at more of a 5 to 8 than that 12 to 18 we were talking about yesterday. And there's a few reasons for this. You can see in the county chart here that a lot of our winter storm warnings and winter storm watches are in the same areas and you can see this top area of New York is being untouched. That's because this storm is a little bit closer to the coast um, uh, mixing with cold air as opposed to a separate system that's moving down. Now we've had a few situations where we have a low moisture system moving up the East Coast and then meeting with a low system over the Great Lakes and that is adding uh, to these uh, nor'easter storms and that's why we had uh, coverage in the areas of New York and east of the Great Lakes like Buffalo and then Erie, Pennsylvania, Watertown uh, areas we talk about a lot and the reason that this isn't happening this time is because this nor'easter is basically just a single low pressure system moving up the coast so it's closer now than it's going to be at any other point in the storm and we're gonna look at this on a model we check out frequently that is this one here let's center us up so we can get a closer look at the northeast now as I move back and forth here you could see the center rotation that we were talking about that moved over from the center of the country has now finally met with this big exploding moisture system that went over Florida. Now check out, anything, anytime you see these deep greens, that is a lot of moisture. That's basically thunderstorm, rain, lightning, you name it. So that, once again, is why this is becoming a nor'easter. We get our classic nine shape, which you can see a lot more defined on sites like Tropical Tidbits that we use also very often. You see how we have that nine shape going, that moisture is being pulled out of the Caribbean, uh, being spun in a counterclockwise direction, being met with cold air as a dip from the jet stream allows that to come down from Canada. So we're not dealing with two separate systems meeting and whipping around each other. We are dealing with moisture being pulled out of the Caribbean, spinning around and then mixing with cold air and turning into snow as it hits the coast, which is why this is a uh, an I-95 storm, they like to call it, because it follows the I-95 path um, along the coast of the northeast. So upper areas of New York and even upper areas of Vermont and New Hampshire may be untouched by this. This will affect Bangor, Maine, uh, Boston. You are still in that 6 to 8 range, possibly 10 inches closer to the coast. And the reason for this, guys, we've talked about, I know, a lot of repetitive information here, but still it's worth talking about because this is how we learn about these things. As you can see, this low pressure 
is still being pulled with warm, moist air. So you can see as we're in the Chesapeake Bay and down north of, uh, near the Carolinas, the coast is still in that green, that rain. But then as we move towards the north, it mixes with that cold dip in the jet stream, and then you see the blues pop up. So Chesapeake Bay, areas of northern Virginia, a lot of West Virginia, you're still in that 3 to 5, 2 to 4 average in this entire area, but now the center focus of this storm is going to be New York City, which is why we've had over a thousand flights canceled, school closings in New York City, that's a very rare thing to do ahead of time of a storm. Um, but again, Philadelphia 5 to 8, and now Washington, D.C., you're expected 5 to 8 average as well, which is a little lower than expected. So once again, this is now going to be a New Jersey, which uh, still stands as of yesterday, uh, New Jersey and New York storm. Now, Central Park, they are expecting 12 to 18 inches. When was the last time we saw that? Uh, I would have to actually do a little research. I know that is record-breaking. That would be the highest snowfall, I believe, uh, at least the highest snowfall for the month of March they're talking about. So that would be pretty interesting to see a record broken in New York along with an earthquake that has been the largest in the last two years. So uh, let's take a look at what we could see coming in the near future. We have this storm coming and going, gone by Thursday. Very quick punch, um, but a lot of snow being dumped with it because of that moisture pull out of the Gulf. We talk about that a lot because it's very important. That's where the fuel comes from from these storms. Now, as we move forward, you see that little spin right there? We've got to keep an eye out on this thing. This is March 27th and 28th. Now, I talked about a possible nor'easter on the 28th a couple days ago, depending on where this low pressure ends up. Will it get closer to the coast? Will it stay out? We don't know yet. We've got to keep an eye on it. But Easter Sunday is still looking very scary, guys. Look at this. March 31st, the entire southeast is covered in major precipitation. And then, boom, look at this. April 1st, April Fool's Day, Easter Sunday, we have our classic 9 symbol for a nor'easter in the same exact spot we've had our last four. This could be the fifth nor'easter in a 30-day period because the first one I believe was March 3rd. If we're talking April 1st, that is 30, okay, maybe 31, 32 days. That would definitely be a record breaker because we're already talking about four in one month. I believe that broke a record since 2015. Uh, we have had four nor'easters in a season, but we've had four as in one in each month uh, throughout the winter. So four in one month is very, very rare. I don't care what anyone says. That is a very rare situation for nor'easters in one month. But here is the shot right here, guys. This is the new update from the GFS model. April 1st, April Fool's Day. Easter Sunday, a classic nor'easter shape we are looking at, so um, we're going to have a lot to follow over the next couple days. I hate to cut this short, got to get to work. Uh, we're trying to finish before the snow gets here. Uh, we are expected to actually get snow now, so this thing has been pulling a little bit more moisture up from the Caribbean and spinning it closer inside because that low pressure is closer uh, to the coast now. So that is also what's allowing Philadelphia and D.C. to have less of a snowfall average. We'll see what happens, but still, it's going to be that crappy wet snow that we just do not like to shovel and you can see here the bulk of this is going to be right in this area here right in New York City central New Jersey and Long Island and then uh, Boston is when it's going to taper off into that six to eight and then as we move up Bangor Maine uh, Vermont New Hampshire you will get your rounds later on in the day today into Thursday so there we have it guys that's our update for today everyone stay safe and uh, just keep an eye on your local weather or keep an eye on the channel I'll update throughout the day thank you very much have a good morning bye bye